Welcome Bronco Nation to the final video in my Boise State 2022 review series. You've had an offensive review with Ron Counts. You've had a defense review with BJ Reigns. And now we're wrapping everything up today with the special teams. I've got amazing former Boise State kicker Tyler Rousa on again. Uh, he's been on the channel before and he's back today to talk about the Boise State special teams. Of course, he helped me preview this unit before the season started and talk about what fans may expect. So we might kick back to some of those predictions. But he's going to be here today to help me look back at what happened with the season, what happened with the kicking game, the punting game, the coverage, the return. We'll talk about all of those units specifically and how the season progressed for the special teams here and take a little bit of a look forward to 2023. So Tyler Rousa doesn't need much of an introduction for most Boise State fans, but of course, Boise State kicker. Uh, on the team from 2013 to 2016. He scored the first ever points in the XFL startup in 2020. He was also uh, with the USFL Bandits last season, and we're all excited for whatever the future holds for him. Thanks so much for being on the show today, Rasta. No, I appreciate you having me on again, man. I enjoy these always. and excited to talk about this. All right, well, we're going to get straight into it then. I mean, they've got a lot to cover here, so we'll just roll right into the kicking game. So looking specifically at the kicking game, of course, Jonah Dalmez, Boy State kicker, 23 out of 27, 85.2%, uh, long of 51. Now, this is how good Dalmas has been for Boise State, that this almost felt like a little bit of a down year, and he kicked for over 85%. You know, he only missed four field goals, mm -hmm. and, it, it, and that's how good he is. So we're going to look at some, some of the things that kind of went wrong in some aspects, and that's kind of a trend for the special teams. If you look at the three units, offense, defense, special teams, of all of the three, the special teams had the most, shall we say, learning points, building points for 2023. But there are so many positives as well. So it's not just going to be all negative. But we will talk about some of those negatives here as we build towards some of the great things that also happened. You know, three out of the four misses were from mid-range, the 30 to 39. We'll talk about that. Um, it was his lowest percentage so far just because of how great he has been first year, seven out of eight. Second year, 26 out of 28. There was some hope maybe he could get that perfect record this year overall, of course, ending up just short. Um, but he uh, the, had like 51, and he went 23 out of 27. And his leg was the difference in three games. You, you look back at the previous seasons, he'd had great kicking percentages, but it, you look at the score differentials, you couldn't really go back and say, like, that we won the game because of his leg in, in most of those performances. Well, this year, you can look back and say, those three games, you know, that's on Dalmas. Air Force, four out of four, that was a really close game. He counted for 12 points there. Wyoming, and then the bowl game. You know, bowl game, 35 out of 32. We went by three points, and he went two of two kicking in that game. So uh, he started off the year a little bit rough with two misses versus Oregon State, but he only had two misses the rest of the year out to finish with a great record overall. Um, how did the new long snapper, how did that impact this kicking game? Uh, it's kind of a question right off the bat. You know, obviously we replacing Contrell, so we had a new long snapper in. How did that impact the game this season? That was something we discussed coming into it this year. Uh, and what are your just initial thoughts here on how the kicking game went uh, for Boy State here with John Dalmas? So with the long snapper, he did awesome this year. I mean, stepping in um, in place of Daniel, you know, he came in. If you did not really notice him, he did his job. You know, there's a couple here and there where he had laces pointed a bad way, this and that, but that's what you have a holder for to, to help you out with. But for the most part, he did a really good job. I think there was maybe one snap in uh, Nevada where, you know, it's below freezing temperatures, balls a little slick. You know, it takes a little bit of a learning curve, but he did awesome. Um, as far as Jonah, what, you know, what happened with those kicks that he missed is he took those plays off. Um, you know, and, and this is coming from, you know, I've, I've helped train Jonah since he first even got to Boise state. So I know exactly what's going on with him at all times. And so, you know, the, that first game, he just, he wasn't there. He didn't come to play. He wasn't ready. He, he just didn't put himself in a position to succeed. Uh, what happened in Wyoming, he took the playoff, you know, uh, he treated it as, you know, I'm a little bit downwind. I can kind of just, you know, go out there and put it in and it got away from him. And then all of a sudden he comes back, chip on the shoulder and he's drilling balls. And that's all it is. It's all self air with Jonah. And it's, it has nothing to do with kind of anything else besides him. Um, and he's, you know, we're working through uh, most of that right now. We're not taking any kicks off, you know, having a purpose with every single kick, having um, a target, having, you know, just an overall, just a better approach with every single kick, no matter how far it is. And that's, that's where he's going to improve big time, you know, come his 
super senior now. I mean, the kid's like 30 years old. Uh, um, but, uh, and then overall, you know, the, it, and even with James too, with James, it's, you know, we'll get into that, but he, you know, for his first year, I thought he did well. <clears throat> So obviously two misses there versus Oregon State. You know, you talked about it. It wasn't just him. I mean, the whole team seemed to be at a little bit of a funk there that yeah. they were the rest of the year. Um, but two misses versus Oregon State only has two misses the rest of the year. You know, how did how did John Dalmas overcome those early struggles and and get himself in the right head headspace and mindset to go through and have a great year the rest of the season? Like you said, only two more misses the rest of the year. Yeah, just comes ready to play. Um knows that he can't just show up and do well. You know, he's got to prepare. He's got to mentally prepare, and he's got to go out. And he's got to do exactly what he needs to do in order to succeed. You know, not going by anybody else's plan but his own. Because at the end of the day, what happens between his ears, you know, that's going to be his friend or his enemy, and he just found a way to make it his friend. That's all. Is there anything that jumps out to you reason-wise when you start seeing kind of those mid-range misses? You, you come out, you're perfect from short range, and then you're perfect from deep. Um, is there anything that kind of goes into the mindset of kicking a mid-range kick where you're kind of in between guaranteed should make it and maybe this is a little bit longer? Is there any kind of approach or different mindset that comes into those kind of right in between range shots? Yeah, it's and it's mostly, you know, that 30 to 39 range is where, you know, it's it's that kind of sneaky distance that can get away from it. You know, it's not one of those. You know, it's it's kind of like one of those NFL PATs. It's not something that you can just automatically put in. Um, you know, you got to really take your time, but you also got to really put yourself into the kick every single time and treat it as if, you know, it is, you know, that really close range where, you know, it's comfortable, but also, you know, give it that concentration, and you know, from 45 and out that you would put into every other kick. You know, it's it's something that you, it does take some practice and it's, that's where you see a lot of guys miss is because they take those kicks off and they let one get away from them. Well, I know that he is a, he's a competitor. You know, you see it every time he goes out there, you know, and I think that he's going to show that improvement next season. And again, when we're talking about improvements, he only missed four kicks, you know, I mean, there, there, there yeah. are many field goal kickers across the collegiate landscape and NFL. You talk about extra points and uh, playoff games. There are, there are a lot of kickers out there who would love to only miss four kicks in a season. So, again, there, there's, there's right. things to work with. There is with every player every, every year. But still, overall, <clears throat> a great season for Jonah Dalmes. And I want to move on to because you mentioned it earlier, moving on to talking about the punting game here. With James Ferguson Reynolds, he first year punting, Boise State, Aussie punting, coming in, uh, first time experiencing America, the collegiate football game here at this level here in America, um, at the FBS, 53 kick, 41. Point eight yard average, long of sixty one. He had seven kicks of fifty yards or more, and he had uh, twenty one kicks land inside the twenty. But it wasn't a smooth sailing all the way through. You know, some early struggles. Uh, wasn't really getting the uh, so just some difficulty settling into the role. I think you know he had some early struggles there. He was replaced by Will Farron at one point in the Fresno State game. He ended up going out uh, kicking two punts for averaging thirty five point five yards. But he came back, and I felt like as the season progressed, we saw him get more and more comfortable in that role, in the in the special teams unit and overall. And his kick seemed to elongate a little bit. You started seeing the roll. You know, you started seeing getting the roll down the field from those kind of Aussie kicks that you expect versus before. They were kind of the, the mid-range punt like you expect from an Aussie punter, but they were kind of just kicking up. And you started seeing those longer rolls, but you saw one in the North Texas game. Um, what, you know, when I look at players that developed this season and Taylor Green pops out as a player that, you know, had some amazing progression, but aside from Taylor Green, I actually think that Ferguson for me is the most improved player on this roster from beginning of the year where he was a little bit of, of you know, rusty settling in, you know, to being at the end of the year, a true strength for this team. What did you see from him in terms of his development from start to finish this season? Uh, coaching, coaching, playing to his strength. Uh, initially starting out the year, they did not play to his strengths. They uh, had some questionable calls where they have him in the pocket doing pocket style, even though they're practicing mostly, you know, rugby style punts. Um, and that's what you need to do with him. You need to keep playing rugby, but you also need to give him the option to choose what he wants to do. And that's what they kind of started doing at the end of the year because they started playing to his strength. So in the beginning of the year, you know, they are, yeah, you're basically trying to do too much. You're trying to, you know, kind of show off, you know, different talents instead of just 
doing what he does best. And that's where they started to figure out at the end of the year. And, you know, there's two punts that really kind of stuck out where, you know, we ran into some trouble. Um, again, I, I would put that more on coaching than it would be on James because it's, again, they were not playing to his strengths and they were not giving him the chance to really go out there and succeed where we saw, you know, like Talon where, you know, Cutter is playing to his strengths. He's rolling him out of the pocket. He's getting him, you know, short dump offs at first, getting him comfortable. And he's starting to, you know, he's starting to pick it up. And it was the same thing with James. You know, they, you know, put him in a weird position at first, but once they start playing to his strengths, once they start giving him the option to do what he needs to do in order to succeed, he was balling out. He's doing great. So you expect that going into next season, he'll hit the ground running a lot stronger than he <laughs> I expect him to. Um, the problem is we're going through, you know, uh, with Pop leaving and Bonifa leaving, we're going to have a new special teams coordinator. It's going to depend on what, you know, what his scheme is, what he wants to do, if he's going to be, you know, pockets out, or if he wants to roll out, you know, it's, it's going to come with a whole new territory. So we're going to see. It's, it's all going to be new. Do you think that obviously playing to his strengths, you know, coming in as a freshman, he's going to play to what he's used to, what he's able to right now. Do you think that he has the capability from what you've seen, if needed to develop into a little bit more of that pocket style versus the rollout rugby style? Or do you think that, I mean, a lot of Aussie punters, that's what they know. So do you think he's kind of one set or do you think he's potentially with the right coaching and development multidimensional here? I mean, I think he can be multidimensional. You just have to give equal practice if you want to stay pocket give him equal practice at pocket. However, he's got the ball skills. He's got, you know, the hand to eye coordination with, you know, with his rugby style punts, because that's what they grow up um, doing in Australia is they, you know, they kick a ball first before throwing it. So, right. you know, if, if they're going to pocket style, you know, he's going to have some time to adjust and he'll figure it out. But I think they'll, if they do continue to go um, in the direction they did last year, they'll, they'll stay to rugby. Well, another element of the game that has some elements that is going to maybe change a little bit with a new special teams coordinator coming in is definitely the return game. If you talk about units that maybe maybe disappointed a little bit more than others, the return game was one that we didn't see any major uh, you know, plays out of this year. As far as kick returns, we had five different main kick returners there, three main different punt returners throughout the season. Um, Cole Wright was kind of a majority of the year, and then we ended up using Dudley the last few games. Both of them looked pretty okay, you know, in some moments. Dudley, very explosive. Um, but, again, no kick returns plus 40 yards. Punt returning was an adventure this year. You started out um, with Cobbs back there, and then Hawani went in and uh, then ended up being replaced by Kate. But again, nothing that looks Shakir or Avery-esque out there, and no returns of more, greater than 20 yards. You know, why did Boise State struggle in the return game this year when they've been so explosive in that unit historically for Boise State? Yeah, it's more schematic, um, you know, more of that coaching, more of, you know, trying to get guys in the right place and, you know, between holdups, between attacking. Um, I would say we were more on our heels most of the year than actually being on our toes and, and doing something. So we were playing, you, you know, you played a little bit timid for a lot of those opportunities. Um, and then the opportunities that, you know, we do try and set up a return, it's, you know, again, schematically just wasn't there. Um, so that's where, you know, things, I think things will change come this new year. I think we'll be a little bit more aggressive, but yeah, you can't, you can't spend your time on return games on your heels because you, you got to attack. What were your thoughts on Halani being used there in the return game, especially when you've got <clears> such a <throat> offense and a huge workload ready for the running back? I know we talked about um, in the preview for the special about using your best guys on special teams but when you have a offense that is so focused on the run and around you know one or two players do you think there's any downside to using someone who's basically your whole offense runs around on the return game or did you think that that was maybe a positive as a way of sparking him and getting him into the game and, and getting used to the flow uh there yeah put the best guys on the field and put the ball in the best players hands um plain and simple you know, it's, it's the same thing with, you know, when Coach Peterson was here, he had Doug Martin on every single special teams. Sure. Um, you put the best guys on the field and you put the ball in the best players' hands at all times. 
And for Halani, you know, you break off a big run on, on a punt return, all of a sudden momentum changes and he's running downfield a little harder than what he used to. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, and, and I think, you know, it, it kind of goes back to, there was one run with Alexander Madison, uh, his sophomore year where, you know, he was running a little bit timid then all of a sudden he's on a special teams play where, you know, he hits somebody and then he goes in, you know, the next, um, offensive possession, all of a sudden he breaks off one run where, you know, the tide turned after that. He figured out he can run downhill and run downhill hard, you know, and that's all it takes. Put the ball in the best player's hands and let him do, go to work. Looking forward a little bit to this next season. Again, that's not necessarily the focus of this video, but is there, uh, I mean, like I said, five different kick returners, three different punt returners, and we got some new faces coming onto the team this year as well. Um, is there a name that pops out to you as a potential uh, that could maybe turn this unit around, or do you think that it's more of developing the guys that are already kind of a part of that unit this year? Yeah, develop the guys. Um, I think they they get vets more involved, and I think again they're going to be on their toes rather than their heels this year. And I I think that's what it's going to be. Well, shifting uh, to the coverage unit here, looking at kind of the final section of the special <laughs> team review. Uh, one blocked punt, two blocked kicks, uh, but when you go beyond that to the pure coverage uh, of the returns themselves, not great statistically. Actually, dead last in the NCAA, 131st in punt return coverage, um, averaged 18.7 yards per punt return allowed and three punt return touchdowns, and then 89th on kick return defense, so not as bad as punt return, but still, you know, lower half of college football, lower third, um, gave up Mm -hmm. 21.54 yard average per return and a touchdown, Um, and then when you look at that Mountain West Championship game, you know, you look at that final mm-hmm. score being 28 to 16, you look at two of those touchdowns, which is 14 points, really kind of being more being on special teams. You know, one punt return, giving up for a touchdown, and then a roughing the punter call on a questionable call for a block punt on some fans' minds um, that ended up giving the roughing the punter and then it go down and convert into a touchdown. So you take away those two mistakes, you know, nothing for sure. But you take away those two touchdowns, which you put on the special teams, Boise State wins that game by two. So you, you talk about, again, I, I don't want this video, these videos to be negative. I want us to build and look to the future. We've got to look at the learning points and see what we're building on here. So the you know, biggest factor <clears throat> in issues here and how does Boise State fix these going forward into next season? Yeah, it's it's uh, all those were coaching. All those were were on coaching. Um, you know, players were just doing what they were you know taught to do. Uh, starting with the, uh, kickoff team defending the return, uh, you know, Jonah's got to get better with kicking touchbacks. That's good. That's a huge thing because, you know, the more chances you give a return team on the field, the more times they're going to schematically figure out a way to return it. You know, there's going to be, you know, one or two blocks that are going to be made over and over again. That's going to open up the holes, no matter how good your return team is. They will, the more returns you get, the more they're going to figure it out. So Jonah needs to figure out a way to get more touchbacks um, for the kickoff team in order to defend that because the more touchbacks you have, there's no yardage on your return team or on your kickoff team. Um, Punt team. Yeah. There's a, you know, between consistently trying to set up a net and basically when you set up a net is you never want two guys stacked upon each other. So when you do get, you want to form an umbrella, you know, around basically. So if you have a returner up top, you want an umbrella around him. No guys ever stack behind each other because then you can have one guy that blocks another guy into one or two other guys. And it's three birds, two birds, one stone. So Mm -hmm. when you create that umbrella, you don't force anything outside. You keep everything inside. The returner either has to make you know, a call of if he wants to try and cut, go outside, but you really wanted to get him inside because then every, after that, everybody can break down, you know, collapse in the middle. Uh, what ended up happening was we had four guys stacked on top of each other. And then whenever you have your first guy down the field, basically he's your spear. He takes a shot no matter what, because what that does is that has a returner either stop his feet or he has to, um, basically make a move laterally rather than go upfield or downfield, you can say. Um, so in the, 
what happened with Fresno State was we had three guys break down. Two guys were, you know, right behind another. All I had, all it took was one guy from Fresno State to put a block and it slowed down three different guys. Um, mm. We had our long snapper basically break down instead of take a shot. So immediately he's out of the play because you have their best player on Fresno State who's returning the ball. He makes one cut. He gets downfield touchdown. I mean, it's there are so many, you know, coaching points on that. That one play alone, it was it was out of control. Um, it was too easy. And then on the UTEP, um, you know, it starts with, it starts with, uh, you know, putting our punter in a position to succeed. And mm-hmm. then on top of that, you know, he hits a, you know, 3.2 hang time ball that goes 45 yards out kicks his coverage. And then mm-hmm. we have guys stacking each other. And then it took three blocks. Um, on a total of six guys, I think, and it took us out in that, you know, nail in the coffin. So it's coaching, it's repetition, it's you need to do special teams every single day, plain and simple. It is the biggest part of the game. It is how you get advantages. It is how, you know, Coach Pete and Coach Harson, you know, and then you have Coach Riddle, Avalos was a part of it at one point, Um, you know, Coach Huff, you know, it's got to be something done every single day. Otherwise, you're going to get exposed like we did. I'll be honest, I didn't pay a super ton of attention about who exactly was on the coverage team units as far as personnel all the way across the board. But from your perspective, <laughs> about putting your best guys, you know, not you know, a lot of times special teams is an opportunity for new guys to to get it, you know, show their show their face to the coach and show they can go out and hit. But uh, did you feel like Boy State was putting their top defenders on special teams, their top players on special teams this year? Um, or was it more of a uh, kind of a secondary thought process? No, we uh, we had a lot of our top guys on the field, and we had a lot of good special teams guy on the field. I mean, there is there is no reason why any of those should be, you know, returned like they were. Um, again, it's it's more so playing on our heels and on our toes. You know, we need to be in a more of a attack mindset rather than being on our our heels. Well, thanks so much for doing this video. This was a great wrap up, I think, of the last section here going through the special teams. And again, it's kind of one of those units where there's a lot to talk about because it's, you know, offense, defense, obviously uh, can be broken down to lots of different sections as well. But a special team is, is one of those units I think you talked about as well, the long snapper. Like if you aren't talking about it, it probably means it's a good thing. <laughs> but it's also one of those things that kind of gets overlooked a lot of times and it becomes such an important part of the game because it's going to impact not just the points you put on the board through the uh, field goal units, but it's also going to impact how the defense performs and how you position the offense that comes onto the field, you know, where you're getting your defense starting off from those punts or where you're allowing the offense to start off from the kick return coverage. So, you know, you are definitely a special teams unit is, is the key to every aspect of how the offense and defense is going to end up performing in the end. So I think when you look at a team that had a great year overall, and maybe some moments where they could have shone Brett brighter, maybe got a Mountain West Championship game. You look at some of those little things that maybe didn't go right, and with the right focus and right uh, corrections, we can see something bigger and brighter this next year. So thanks, everybody, for watching. I'm excited. I'm excited for this discussion. I'm excited to do my preview series. Um, make sure you like, subscribe, because we went through and we previewed the special teams in depth. We made some predictions. I'm just going to go over real quick because I'll tell you what. I wasn't necessarily on board with some of my predictions this year. I was definitely off on what I was talking about with Bachmeyer. But as far as special teams go, I nailed it, and I just want to kind of trumpet it a little bit here. I said Dalmez would be used a lot, especially early in the season. It would end up with uh, three short of perfect and four short, or just one off there. I said he'd be uh, the determinator for at least – or his leg would determine at least two games, ended up determining three. So, again, only one off there. I said Honey would be rough at the beginning, but about half through. Perfect there. And then I said Boise State would block three kicks, uh, three punts and three kicks, two kicks blocked and one punt. So, I mean, that's not perfect, but a little off. The only thing I was off, I said the returning game would have a resurgence. So, you know, it can't be perfect across the board. But, hey, those were our predictions this year. Uh, Don, uh, we had Rouse join me and we talked about those and we gave a great predictions. So make sure that you like and subscribe because I'm going to be putting together another preview series for this year. And we're going to talk about Boy State 2023. We're going to go in-depth, all these units, offense, defense, special teams. We're going to have former players and back on just like I did last year. So thanks so much, everybody, for watching. Make sure you like, subscribe. Don't miss out on any of those videos. Thanks so much for joining us today, Tyler. I'll let you close out with any final thoughts here before we uh, wrap it up.
No, I appreciate you having me on again. Always exciting to talk about this. Um, you know, there's a lot that needs to be done, but should be uh, should be good and exciting for next year. Well, thanks again for being on. Thanks, everybody, for watching the end. Let us know your thoughts in the comment section, uh, whether it be on YouTube or Facebook or Twitter or however it is that you're viewing this video. Thanks, everybody, for being with us today. Let's end it the right way and go in blue.